reveal the truth. You can't handle the truth. What do all men power want? More power. And now, broadcasting live from deep within the borders of occupied liberal territory known as California, Luca Zana with love, guns, and freedom. All systems go. Don't tread on us. We're not afraid. You work for us. We're not your slaves. Don't tread on us. Hello everybody, this is Gianluca Zanna and you're listening to Love, Guns and Freedom on K Talks 1340 AM. As probably you already know, I'm an Italian by birth, but I'm an American by choice and an Arizona by gift of God. And I pray him every day. I'm very thankful for that. I'm not here to entertain because I'm not that good, but my goal is to engage each other in the search for the truth with the goal to regaining our lost liberties and taking America back, starting with our local government. When I became an American, I took an oath to defend this republic and its constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Even though I'm a registered Republican, as probably you already know, I never pledge allegiance to a party, to a man or to a woman but to America as an ideal of liberty and justice. I believe in life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. I believe also that all human beings are unique and different. We are not all the same, come on. We are different from each other, but each of us have the same inalienable rights and all should be treated with equal respect. I believe that the role of government, it is not to be my God, you know? I believe that government does not own my body or my soul. It is not about left or right, not about Republicans or Democrats. It's about right or wrong, liberty or tyranny, truth or deception. I'm against all forms of collectivism. I come from a collectivist country and I escape from that. And I pray that we can keep this country the way it used to be, the way it's supposed to be, a country where the individual has the rights and the mob and the collectivist, they cannot steal from that. We are a republic, we are not a democracy, let's not forget. I believe that in the potential of the individual, because I believe that one person can make a difference. That's why I'm here. I'm trying my best. With my limitation, I'm doing my part. Thank you for listening to Love, Guns and Freedom. And now we go to our special guest of today. Special guest. I'm very honored and uh, very thankful. We have from um, Lake Havasu. And today, by the way, is Sunday. And he took his own personal time. Arizona State Representative Sonny Borelli is here with us to talk uh, about uh, many things, but more important, I would like to thank him to be here. Thank you very much, uh, Representative Borelli. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. And uh, first of all, you are our state representative. You represent District 5, right? You're Republican. Yes. You are elected in um, 2012, correct? Yes. How has it been going? How did you like the right? Uh, it's been uh, very interesting. It's very, very, you know, your your background is amazing because you are a walking proof source of where this country is is going. You came from a background, you were in Europe, you've seen how Europe is just out of control and this country is starting to follow those same footsteps. And you're that walking proof source that says, hey, that is the wrong way to go. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be calling on you to say as the example of, Hey, this is a man that came from a collective countries where tyranny runs rampant and we're going in the wrong path is your, your perfect example of where we don't need to be going. Thank so. you, Representative. And it's true. You know, unfortunately, uh, when I talk to fellow Americans that they believe that uh, the collectivist way is the right way, I say, I'm sorry. Uh, first of all, I believe that the individual is a uh, as freedom and rights that the mob or the majority should not be able to deprive because whenever there is collectivist means there is violence, there is force. They try to use the force of government to deny your individual rights. 
And on top, even is uh, for me philosophically is wrong. Also, in the practical point of view, it never worked. It never does. Well, that's uh, mob rule. Is, I mean, that's democracy in its truest definition. Is two wolves and a sheep voting on what's going to have for lunch. Exactly. So, uh, yeah. If you have no your rights uh, defended, you know, like say property or your business or your labor and your mind, you know, how can you flourish? I mean, wherever there is freedom is proven. Why America has been so successful the first 200 years? Because it was freedom. The individual was defended. The right of the government was to defend individual rights among those property and your labor. And then you can flourish. Otherwise, in Europe, if we have no defense against the uh, the mob they can steal from you, right. there is no motivation to do anything. Well, that's why we have a written constitution. We are a nation of laws, not men, where it's mob rules going to take control. And people get, they get confused over that. They get confused over the words, we the people. Mm -hmm. We the people not meaning the democracy is what we want, you know. It's, I hear that a lot. It's just what we want. So, wait a minute. We the people means we will not be controlled by the nobles. We will not be controlled by the educated elite and the rich people or the big organizations we the people will control our own destiny and having our own representatives representing us in government perfect and on top exactly as you said that we don't want to uh, even the, the difference between the republic and the democracy the republic we have the individual the minority there the, is right or a right they always defend it instead in the democracy the individual rights they always get taken over by the majority that's uh, pretty much the story you know they use that mentality to say 51 percent of us we decide that we don't like your shirt so take your shirt off <laughs> well yeah statistics uh, yeah. there's there's three kinds of liars there's there's good ones bad ones and there's statisticians so i mean you have to understand how uh statistics is being is being used and and manipulated on us i mean there's two types of of uh, mathematics there's the arithmetic and then there's statistics mathematics is is based on factually proven formulas statistics statistics are are tools utilized for the manipulation of sample data so you got to be careful when somebody starts throwing numbers around perfect so at least a little bit about you you know now you are our state representative for our district but also your background you serve uh, in the Marine Corps uh, for more than 20 years right from yeah. 77 to 1999 yes tell That's me a little right. bit about your background well I was it was I had a lot of fun I was in the Marines uh, 22 years uh, spent most of my career out on the West Coast overseas a few times and uh, uh, I started out as an infantryman, and then motor, I went into motor transport. I was a truck driver, and then finally logistics embarkation, combat service support. And so you took your oath twice. One as a military man first to defend his republic, and also now our state representative. Right, so, so and there's no expiration date on the first oath I took. Perfect. So that's, I like that. That's why I really uh, I like very much... Um, the generation that you represent because first of all i think all the military that they really seriously take you off they are the best part of this country because they care about this country they sacrifice their paycheck exactly they don't do that type of line of business because of the money is not that good you do it because you love the country and that's why i think and also is proven now we have one of the first uh, put uh, according to homeland security the potential domestic terrorists on the top list is official from the documents from Homeland Security. We have returning veterans. I mean, this is scary. I mean, what do well, you think? Well, about? Yeah, look, yeah, well, that came from uh, Janet Napolitano, a former governor of Arizona. Mm -hmm. um, I think, didn't, who did she, uh, when she was a lawyer, didn't, didn't she? Uh, defend Michael McVeigh or Timothy McVeigh? I don't, I don't remember something uh, like that. But yeah, she had said uh, in the. Homeland Security report, ATF report, or whatever it was, uh, all vets and, and returning vets should be considered right-wing extremists. It's kind of amazing. It's always the the, the left side of the aisle that uh, the extremists come from that do all the um, murders and... and but, <laughs> representative, let me tell you something. This is not just that now with Obama. The, there are documents, even during the Bush administration, the process started there. Yep. We have been... Why? Because you know that the military people... The good people that they really want to uphold the oath that you did, you right. took, they are they for the constitution, they are for the republic, and if uh, a tyrant of an organization of uh, some special interest wants to destroy this country and take over, they understand that people like you, 
they are not the average uh, nine to five or regular guy or the person that is sitting in front of the TV all day. You, they have a problem because how many veterans we have out there? Well, in uh, Mojave County alone, there's over 17,000 that we know of. Okay, so these people they already risked their life. They are not afraid, and especially they had to fight before somebody else. Now, I think they know it. They know, and if I was a, a tyrannical government, I would be really concerned about people like you. Well, there's good things in the Patriot Act, and there's some good things in, in the, the and here's the problem, folks, is, is the, well, the NDAA and the Patriot Act. You know, it's the intent, the original intent that they, you know, what do they say is, is hell is paved with uh, good intentions. Okay, sure. And, uh, but the problem is, uh, you know, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Mm -hmm. And when we give too much power to one centralized government, we are going to, we're giving up our, our own power to protect ourselves. And, uh, you know, locks are put on doors to keep honest people honest. When you give too much power to government, uh, that becomes extremely dangerous. And, and that needs to, be, uh, needs to be watched over heavily and, uh, you know, and, and pushed back on and when, it, when they start usurping our rights under our Constitution. Because, you know, we gave very limited powers to the federal government in our Constitution. But that's, it's gone crazy. Over the last 50 years, it's just gone completely haywire. Exactly. I mean, uh, since you mentioned the National Defense Authorization Act that we talked also last week with Senator Ward, I mean, just to remind the listeners, I'm sure they already know it, and now in America, the president has the absolute power, discretionary power, to uh, decide if you are a potential terrorist, and at that point, there is no more due process. They can pretty much use also the army. This is the first time since the Civil War, with Posse Comitatus is completely gone. We have uh, military that can be used to arrest American citizens, and uh, you are gone. There is also an indefinite detention. That means you can be thrown out in the dungeon, not even anymore the jail, and you have no access, access to judge, jury, not even in China, I think they do that. Well, and, and here's the thing. That's the original intent, the smokescreen, the facade, was because we we're here in a war and terror. But it's amazing how the, uh, uh, the man sitting there in the, in the White House says that we're not in, we're not, there's no more terrorist uh, threats out there. This is, these are man-caused disasters, not terrorist attacks. And it's kind of funny how they, they change the wording and they distract and they distort the real truth and, and, and get us off somewhere else. And, and they... They put these in there because of the war on terror to go after, example, an American citizen who became a terrorist, like, uh, I can't pronounce his Muslim name, but um, you, you know what I'm talking about. They're Arab and... Yes. And, uh, and, uh, also his son, by the way, he was killed, a 16 years old kid. Right. But then when does it switch over to whoever we're going to tag as a, as a threat to the government? Uh, so, uh, yeah, that, that power can be totally usurped and gone, go completely over... The, the, so I co-sponsored two bills at, uh, this year, and of course they got kind of hung up in the Senate. And uh, uh, one was HB twenty five seventy three, and that was pushing back against the NDAA. Okay, great. And uh, House Bill twenty five seventy four, which pushed back on the use of drones. Okay. Uh, that you have to, <laughs> they have to have a, a warrant. Good. For these kind of things, and of course they kind of got stagnated in the Senate, and at least those are going to be reintroduced. And we appreciate we're, that. They're, they're, that. They're being constantly fought back. I was co-sponsored both those. Thank bills. you, and I would like to also interact one second. Don't you think that maybe? as a deception and also as a try to boil the frog slowly, slowly, they started to say, hey, we have to do this Patriot Act just because the people with the turban, they're going to be after us. Then out of the blue, we see that the real enemies, uh, we've, since we've been so almost, uh, uh, this and, how you say, when something that you get uh, this and, desensitized, right. okay? Hey, after all, this was just made for the bad guys. Now we are the bad guys. Right. So, in my personal opinion, and also as a, you know, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, it doesn't. We don't pick and choose whenever we want to use it. You know, due process is done in a way that I don't care if it's a Democrat or Republican. There, we want to be sure that we always have the due process. Because, for example, today, yesterday was the 16 years old uh, son of this. Uh, man that uh, was a naturalized American from some Arab country. By the way, his son, 16 years old guy in Yemen, he was killed with no process, with no judge, no trial, and he was an American citizen. I think, I don't care how dangerous you look, every one of us, we should have always the, the right to face a due process. Otherwise, if we leave the absolute power to 
unless we are on the battlefield. If we're on the battlefield, it may be different. But we're talking about assassination. There has been proven now that uh, the government, especially this government, has this absolute power. It should freak everybody out. Because uh, think about it. They can say, Mr. Borelli, I think you are a terrorist. We have proved that you've been talking with uh, strange people and uh, you've been on the radio talking about very subversive things like freedom and rights, constitution, the damn constitution. You, <laughs> according to their books today, the definition of uh, a terrorist, we have uh, returning veterans, is one of the highest top. That's right. So, well, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, we, you're right. I'm on the I'm on the list now. Yeah. I've been on your radio station. Exactly. So, <laughs> we need to preserve, uh, you know, regardless, everybody should have a right to be defended. Well, and that's part of the, the progressive's agenda. They've, you know, when they engulf the uh the Alinsky playbook and, mm -hmm. you know, so today is brought to you by the letter D, and that is distract, defame, distort, deflect, deceive. And, and to demonize, and that's exactly when they want to when they want to come after you. That's exactly what they do. They'll distort the truth. They'll distract and get you focused off of something else rather than staying focused on the real issues. And then they come up with stuff that they want to distract us and get us arguing amongst each other and fighting amongst each other. Exactly. And, and then they, they divide they, and conquer. That was Julius Caesar's first line. You know. You exactly. know? Tell me a little bit about that. You know, I'm always fascinated when I see military men. You know, my uncle used to be a general in Italy, and I was lucky because. Uh, I was able to always like guns, okay? I don't know, call me, since I was a kid, I used to watch uh, Western movies, and unfortunately, you know, I was in Italy, and you know, you don't have rights. You don't have Bill of Rights, you don't have a Second Amendment. The only people who have guns are the government and the mafia, okay? That's it. And the slaves, because slaves are always disarmed, we had to watch and pray that you know, you're not gonna get uh, killed. But in my family, I had the chance, through my uh, uncle, that was a general, to live in a nice environment where I had the chance to educate myself a little bit on the safety issue and also practice a little bit. So tell me a little bit about uh, your experience in the Marine Corps. Uh, what was your rifle that you used to shoot at the time? Well, it started off with the M16A2, excuse me, the M16A1, and then we mo then modified uh, M16A2. So. Okay. And then I went from the, the, the Beretta, or from the, the, the Colt 45 pistol to the uh, the Beretta 9mm. So, I know that you yeah. had to qualify every year, right? Every year. Good, good. Do you still enjoy uh, shooting around here? Yes, I do. It, well, ammo's, ammo's getting expensive, but yes. Why don't we do that? <laughs> I'll just try to throw it at you. You know, it would be so cool to have our state representative that once in a while, whenever you have your time, invite your constituents. Since you also, you've been rated like A plus from NRA, and that's yes. really great. We appreciate that. Uh, show, let's go shoot together, you know? Sure. I mean, maybe we can, you can send me an email and next one of the next few shows, whenever you think is a good time for you, let's choose a range that you like and you can, we can share helping each other. You know, you can, we can learn from you and it would be great. I would love that. And I'll teach you how to actually hit something at 500 yards. Excellent. Normally that's what I like to do that too. <laughs> Normally I shoot my M14, honestly, honestly, it's my rifle. Okay. We can go a thousand yards with the M14. Okay, great. <laughs> I love that. That would be a great thing. I think it would be also for, you know, to meet your constituent. People normally, they do you know coffee with the... Or whatever the sheriff or the police, you know, let's go to the range and right. let's. It's, it's have some fun. Let's right. have some great. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna get you on that one. Perfect. What is the purpose, according to your opinion, of the Second Amendment? The Second Amendment needs to be uh, maintained and enforced. No, but what is exactly the purpose? What was the original intent? It was to protect ourselves because back we have to go back, understand history. Because mm -hmm. the reason why the Second Amendment is there is because they had a. You have to remember back in history. Uh, we had a tyrannical government, you know, the king, who disarmed the people. It was able to, for the people to protect themselves uh, against its own government. And, uh, of course, you know, it's not, wasn't for hunting. Now you really and, sound like a terrorist. You know, it wasn't for hunting and all that kind of stuff. It was for you to protect yourself because you cannot rely on the government to protect you. You, cannot pre re you can't rely on the police department to protect you. You have a God-given right to protect yourself. Um, and by using any means of, of uh, technology that's available to you, it's not about hunting. Uh, a well-regulated militia. These things will not be usurped. They will not be uh, overstepped by the federal government. And they create programs. They're going to try to, you know, and run around the Constitution with bureaucratic rules and organizations. Uh, it needs to be pushed back. We, in our own Arizona Constitution, your Second Amendment rights are protected also. Perfect. Question, since I, you know, 
we're talking about the Second Amendment, and we're talking also about the state, the militia in general. I, I just, you know, like to learn also, try to learn as much as I can from our Arizona state laws and also Arizona constitution. That sometimes people forget every state has their own constitution, you know. Yes. I was reading a few years ago in um, our Arizona revised stat statutes, section 122, title 26, starting with section 121, it says, okay, the militia, the militia of the state of Arizona consists of all able-bodied citizens of the state between the age of 18 and 45 years old, and all residents of the state between such ages who have declared their intention to become citizens of the United States. And there are some exceptions that we now we don't need to know. And as shown in this section, the militia in Arizona is pretty much alive and well, because also it's divided in two parts. This is according to Article Section 122. Uh, the militia is divided into the National Guard of Arizona, that we know. Mm -hmm. Also, by the way, confirm me if I'm wrong, I know that now it's being federalized, it's under control of the federal government, right? Some, some portion. Some, part, yes. some portions. Some portion. And it's, it's pretty much logistics for yes. it's logistics. And then there is the State Guard, when organized, and the unorganized militia, that pretty much is every one of us. Right. So that's pretty cool. I mean, amazing. I think one of the few states that has this type of, uh, in our own laws, you know. So we are, maybe I'm borderline 45 I'm getting there you well, know? I don't know anyway I don't care that point the age count but the point <laughs> is is I think it's very important because uh, remind that when people say hey this militia we all militia the point is uh, they, they try to make a, a bad word remember let's not you know but many people maybe in the education system they they're not being thought this country the original revolution that we fought against the English, we didn't have a standing army then. No, we did not have a standing army, and that's one of the reasons why the, the Constitution is written in this this way and, and the Second Amendment is written in such a way because we did not have a standing army. And the Founding Fathers were afraid of a centralized government having a standing army. That's why they wanted to make sure that each state had the right to maintain and have their own militia. Perfect. Their own state militia. Perfect, perfect. So now at this point, I'm glad, you know, because this is something I wanted to verify with you. I found out this about the Arizona. I think it's very unique. And uh, there is a point. Are you f familiar about the small arms treaty? Did you hear about that? Yes. You know that uh, Mr. Kerry with the Obama administration signed it? Yes. So now there is also a case that the Mr. Um, what is his name? Uh, our Attorney General? I forgot. Uh, Eric Holder. I try to forget. Yeah. Anyway, I try to forget too, but yeah. It's, anyway, he's <laughs> trying to uh, debate uh, with the Supreme Court that uh, international treaty, they're above our Constitution. Mm -hmm. Can you see the logic? Sure. Now, I already made my declaration of uh, no compliance a few weeks ago. Uh, I uh, say it again, in case somebody <laughs> missed it. I will never comply with any gun registration, with any gun confiscation, and just to be sure, uh, I'm not even going to hide my guns on the ground because at the point, they don't make any sense. I'm going to keep them on me. I live in the state of Arizona. I am protected by God first, state Bill of Rights, and also my Arizona Constitution. And I want to say very nicely, I'm not a hero. I'm a regular guy, but especially because I'm a regular guy and I understand the risks I'm going to face. I'm not here playing Rambo, but my pride as an American, as my uh, freedom and my rights are more important than my life. Okay. So I, repay, I hope all the NSA is listening right now, and everywhere in Washington. Mr. Gianluca Zanna will never comply with any type of gun registration or confiscation like happened in Australia, England. I'm just going to tell you to take a hike. And uh, that's going to be continued. they got to go through me to, to, uh, to uh, pierce the Arizona state constitution, and they got to pierce our laws before that will happen. And so I'll give you my hand, and you're my brother in arm, okay? Yes. That's what I like of this show. We try to, you know, as I said, we come here, and I want, I, I, every guest I bring here, I believe that, uh, first of all, they're good people, and I really respect people that we come here, and I know we can learn from each other, and I think Mr. Borelli, Representative Borelli, he has a lot of things he can offer to defend our rights. You know, sometimes we need just to help each other in, in learning from each other, but I really like that. So, besides as a state, in case I need an extra hand, maybe we can grab you. You got a lot of good experience there, you know? Yeah, I can teach. Okay, you know, <laughs> hopefully we don't need to go there. That's what we try to stop him at our borders as a state, but That's right. let's not forget, it did happen. You know what happened in Australia, you know that, yeah. England. I mean, people, they just give them. Remember in New Orleans? And, and then gun crimes increased 300, 400%. And then they're slaves. Yes. They tax them to hell and they can even 
speak anymore, like Europe. Look on your links. Remember your links, the gun confiscation? Yep. And then, yeah, when people were looting and people were, yeah. There was, was a dry run. Right? There was a dry run. Anyway, let's move well, on. There was a dry run by, uh, I'm sorry, a, Fema? Command, a commander uh, that, yeah, he. It, But remember something, everything was, you see. The federal government is not supposed to usurp or overstep a was, state governor declaring a, a, a disaster. I'm sorry, but there's jurisdictional um, violations there. Mm -hmm. The federal government just doesn't step in over a state governor's declaration of, in, of emergency. And um, there's a difference between a humanitarian uh, assistance and an uprising. Mm -hmm. and there was no uprising. There was no reason to disarm anybody. Maybe it was a dry run. And the, the, for me, the point is, I don't care the last 30, 40 years, we changed and the players. that was a dry game. run or, or came from an, an incompetent uh, commander, either way, somebody should have been relieved. Yes. Now, freedom. Question that I always ask to every guest. Who owns your body? You or the government? You do. Perfect. That simple question like that, a simple answer. Now, if I own my own body, okay, I should be able, without, with the condition that I do not uh, infringe on other, body, uh, other people's rights, okay, to pretty much do almost everything I want to do with the condition that I can afford for it. That means I'm not going to ask you your money and I'm not going to, first of all, endanger other people. Is that a principle of freedom? We can agree on that. Well, yeah. If you're uh, minding your own business, doing your own thing, and nobody knows about it, then uh, there's not really a problem, is there? I'll give you an example. Now, <laughs> I'm not drinking because, you know, we have FCC regulation, okay? Right. But let's say for a moment, instead of having water here, I was drinking wine. My own privacy. No driving. No endanger anybody. I paid for this wine. Mm -hmm. And also, it's tomorrow morning. I cannot wake up because I drank too much wine. I'm not going to get anybody's check. It's going to be my it's personal responsibility. responsibility right. okay? I don't think you care if I'm drinking wine, right? If I get intoxicated with wine. I wouldn't mind. That's my business, my body. Now, as I said already before, I, I'm not, I, de I detest anything that smells like pot, okay? I really hate it. When I was a kid, one time they, they tried to put him close to my nose. Oh my God, this is terrible. First of all, I like to be alert and I like to be vigilant and this is not for me. But my... Whatever is for me doesn't mean that it doesn't need to be for somebody else. I mean, my personal taste or whatever works for me doesn't mean that I need to decide for other people. The same principle, that's why I'm very um, passionate about that, you know, because if I believe in the principle of freedom that I should be able to do, to grow, especially when it's a natural substance, okay? Tomorrow is pot, marijuana. Tomorrow could be sage or basilic or basil, okay? Or any other herbs. I mean. Think about if the government has that power to legislate. A few years ago was the wine, or the alcohol. They prohibited. Remember what this, happened? Luca, this is nothing new. They did that during the uh, FDR did that back in his presidency, where they were mandating farmers to limit that, that they couldn't grow wheat. Exactly. So because it was cutting into the big, bravo. big farmers. So so, but you know, there's. And these are little topics that the progressives want us to be arguing over and get fighting over. It's kind of like, here, fight, I'll go fetch the stick. And while we're fighting, mm -hmm. you know, chasing the stick, they're robbing the house. No, I understand. Because there are bigger problems that we Look, really need to worry but, about. But, but, at least, uh, but I'm not even fighting, you know, because, you know, I'm yeah. trying to no, I'm just, find solution, you know. Sure. Because the point is, it's all connected to the principle. If today the government can tell me in New York that uh, I cannot have salt on the table in a restaurant, and that's pretty much now what they're doing, I don't know if the Supreme Court, they repealed that in New York, but there's a matter. They try, and they did right. it for a while. And they can tell me how much soda I can drink. Now you see that they pretty much can tell you if I cannot smoke or not a particular plant. And I think that, as I said, if there is the condition that we don't infringe on other people's rights, I think it's very important to be consistent, in my opinion, even if I don't agree, even if I don't like the product, I think maybe for some people also it's proven that maybe some beneficial for the uh, medical things, whatever. I don't even look at that because I think somebody have enjoy to drink wine, they should have the right to enjoy to smoke a plant without compromising anybody else's health, and I shouldn't pay for them, of course. Right, but there's 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 no consistency in anybody in a lot of these arguments. For example, someone says, "Oh, I think I should be able to smoke marijuana," mm -hmm. and then someone, but you cannot smoke a Marlboro. 
Uh, it, it, you know, I, I, I mean, agree some with of you. these things get so so crazy, and I, I listen to some of these arguments from some of the folks. I mean, if you're in your own home and you're smoking a cigarette, I don't think the government's got a right to knock on your door and say no smoking. I know. And I mean, I, there's a lot of arguments about marijuana. It can be used for medical uses and so on and so forth. I mean, every drug that's that's manufactured is a is a is a byproduct or a or a form of something, a synth- synthetic version of something that was organic. I mean, you got opiates mm-hmm. and, and so on and so forth. So when I hear the arguments, well, marijuana should be used, can be used for medical purposes, and we can have medical marijuana, and the citizens voted it in. I say, yeah, but if it's going to be legitimately for medical purposes, then why can't it be legitimately dispensed from a legitimate pharmacy? But so, I, I mean, I, look at California. they got know, all these, these shops over there. They're, I don't even look at medical. Crazy, you know? My opinion I should be able to uh, smoke a plant like I can buy a bottle of wine. Because at the end of the day, our founding fathers, by the way, they used to smoke uh, whatever they used to smoke, the, the hemp, the marijuana. Well, actually, not you know? hemp. You know, they didn't smoke hemp. You Good can't marijuana. smoke hemp. Good. I wanted to get but you actually, there. Actually, marijuana didn't even, no, it wasn't even marijuana. Marijuana came from the Southwest. But uh, the but, hemp, that's what they made canvases and paper Good. out of. So, that was a tricky question, and you got it right. But you'd have to smoke a whole room full of that stuff. By that time, you're going to die of smoke inhalation. So. Bra- bravo. <laughs> bravo. I want to ask you about that. Now, let's move from marijuana Which to is hemp. Which well, goes, well, goes well, Talk to, about hemp. So that's another bureaucratic organization perfect. that put something on the DEA list to scare people. And all it did was, um, when they say, when the government says, we want to spread the wealth, no, what they're trying to do is they're trying to cut out their competition so their buddies would make more money. Bravo. And so they, they, they killed the farmers and they killed that crop here. So that way it goes to Canada and they got to import it from Canada and China and everything else. So you know very well. I'm glad you're aware and I'm glad you caught me there because I was a son of, I wanted to see, you knew it. Hemp cannot be smoked. Well, but you can buy it at the at Lowe's and, and Home Depot. Yeah, but you, it's imported <laughs> from China. You know that. We import it from China. You, you, we Canada. Can't, you can't grow the rope. Yeah. But you can buy it. Yeah. It's sad. This is scary because uh, I hope and pray. That's why we're here. You know, the state of Arizona, like the state of Colorado, already did. They can do it. You can do it, guys. You know, you can educate the other legislators right. and say hemp is just a plant used for commercial purposes. It's the neutered version of, exactly. of the cannabis. And the reason why I got the word cannabis is because they made canvas yes. out of it. And, and why should we be able to import it and we cannot grow it? Make no sense. And you can buy it right there. You don't even have to be 18 years old to buy it at, exactly. at, at Home Depot. <laughs> so I'm glad, you know, and this is great, you know, because I'm learning a lot of things from you and I hope we can l- help each other. So this is great. I really like that. I hope, you know, in the next uh, year that you have down in Phoenix there, you with other people, and uh, you can start to educate other legislators about hemp. It will really help the economy here. You know, we want to get businesses here going, not just jobs, businesses starting new ideas. And this is a really great product, by the way. I think more than 300 uh, millions uh, a year we import of this. Yeah, 300 million. Yeah, you're right. It's amazing. It's your homework. Actually, Kentucky tried passing it also. Mm -hmm. Great. I'm really proud to have you here. Thank you. Now, since I like to have all these little strange topics because we're having fun on top and we know each other freedom great answer i love it hemp i love you more than ever um marijuana we we exchange our ideas and that's fine as you know i'm not even a fan of it i'm just trying to be consistent and i respect with you the idea the government shouldn't tell me now i cannot smoke in marlboro did you see by the way in california i think it's a town you cannot smoke cigarette in your own home right scary now prostitution <laughs> okay i have a question why can we make it legal like in Nevada, Nevada's done? Are you looking for a new line of work? Honestly, you never know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm open, okay? The economy is not that great. Why do you want, to, why do you want men to be exploited? Listen, I think, I, first of all, I, basic to the principle, it is not about the man or the woman. It's about who owns my body. If really I own my body as a man, it could be a woman, doesn't matter, okay? Because also men, they're also prostitute men, okay? It's not just women. I own my body. If I am a farmer or if I am a worker, I give the labor on my arms, okay? Maybe a woman has not that type of strength, and that's her choice. As if I had a daughter or a son, I would say, please, it's wrong. Morally, I don't respect it, but it is, uh, I'm not here to judge others. I let that to God, okay? And all I say, I think that if we really own our body, I should not become a criminal if I go with a prostitute, or especially when there are two people, especially the condition must be we are both over 18, 
adult age, consent, there is no uh, type of violence, and on top, we can make it like everything else. And more important, we really give a chance to the people, the women not mostly, they do that line of business to be protected. They don't need to go through anymore the pimps or all these individuals, the, 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 the crime, organized crime, and it can become like uh, another well, job. His, well, historically, here out here, especially in the West, um, his, historically in Arizona territory and when Arizona had statehood, still prostitution mm -hmm. was legal in certain areas, and it got outlawed in, in, uh, by the folks in those communities. So I think that's a community uh, driven thing to either say yes or no. Okay. I mean, in Nevada, they have it legal in Nye County and a couple mm -hmm. other counties, not Clark County, but. Um, you know that's a citizens initiative, and uh, by state level is not is a, there is a state law that completely outlaws that, right? I mean, it doesn't let it open to local government to say we want to decide what we want to do. I think that, I'm not sure about that. I'm just asking: is there a state law that pretty much is above all the different lo uh, municipalities laws? Well, no city or county can create a, an ordinance that supersedes state law, so yeah. I have to look into that yeah. one. But, so uh, it would be nice that at least to give the chance to the local community, a state, they say, you have the chance well, to decide. Well, here our, our Arizona Constitution gives you that right, because you can have a citizen's initiative put on okay. the ballot. As I said, I'm not an advocate. I'm not a line of business. I'm just trying to always keep the principle of freedom, try to be consistent. If I really own my body, and I, mm -hmm. of course, I'm not in danger, and I'd also want to create a, that uh, type of visual pollution because I don't. That's well, why everybody should be in their homes and places located. And you know, if you have a business transaction with somebody, and it's, you know, I mean, that's that's whatever. But I mean, it, I'm not going to be the more morality police to either. But uh, you know, what problems does this solve, really? I mean, does it create more problems than, than it solves? I mean, those, these are the things that we really need to look at. We have to look at these unintended consequences okay. of, of disease and, and exploitation. And, yes. You know, some people were like, well, it's voluntary, but it may not be voluntary. Right now, you know, there is for sure, the problem never stopped because there is always going to be prostitution since the time of the beginning of the ages. The only thing I learned from Nevada, next door state, yeah. there are some sort of uh, safety rules. There are some sort of a, t a check. You know, there are some sort of guidelines yeah. that uh, you like. Whenever you go to a restaurant, there is an inspection. There is also inspection that type of line of business. So mm -hmm. I, if I want to really go there, I think it would be much more uh, safety and maybe more precautions. And also we avoid to give the money to the bad guys, to the uh, at least... Uh, will be treated like just another line of bill, but just yeah. an input. I mean, just yeah. a seed I like to put on you, and you think about it. Well, it's, it's like I said, if something came across my desk for me to look at and study, hey. then I'll, I will study it, because that's Good. what I'm here for. And like, Excellent. Uh, I mean, uh, it's kind of, I've had to deal with this in Phoenix. It's not what I think, it's what my constituents believe and what they think. So that's how I represent is how uh, the, the folks that I'm sworn to serve, uh, how do they want things done. So I will analyze everything. I don't just say yes, no, and, and uh, st with blinders on, because there's, there's a lot more to it when you start peeling that onion. Exactly. All I try to do, you know, that's why we're here, we're having a conversation, and uh, I'm just trying to be almost a philosopher, try to keep it to the philosophic sure. point, make some logic, and try to be consistent. You know, as we said, you know, I believe that in the individual is responsibility, and the principle of freedom, my opinion, is I have freedom until I don't infringe on your rights. Right. And that's uh, what I think. And well, government shouldn't be my own personal life. You and know. in my, I'm your state representative, and I'm, uh, you know, I, I, I believe that government has a, a different role, uh, more important role, and that's protecting the people, not, uh, not, uh, you know, uh, oppressing you. But uh. <laughs> perfect. So, the, how would you define uh, one phrase? What is the role of government, in your opinion? So, the first role of government is protecting its people. Okay. Period. Okay. And provide that blanket of protection. When the founding fathers said pursuit of uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, okay, and promote the general welfare. Promote the general welfare, not provide Exactly. Welfare, okay? <laughs> but life, liberty, and the pursuit so of the happiness. And so what that means is, is what, you know, uh, let you be free and protect your freedoms, and that's why we have a written constitution that protects those. They're itemized right there, and... Uh, you know, it's, it, perfect. It, it is what it is. Perfect, perfect. I have a song for you today I wanted to play. Okay, one of my songs. This song uh, I wrote it just before I became an American. 
And I know the line is flashy. I'm sorry, guys. Right now we have limited time, and I would like to squeeze more questions with Representative uh, Sonny Borelli, okay? Uh, the, the song is called Thank You, America. And this is uh, from a perspective uh, of me when I was still an immigrant, and especially I was born in uh, another country that uh, not that long ago, I'm talking about just a generation ago, we were in the occupation, and my family was liberated by people like you that uh, went there without even knowing it, completely in the middle of nowhere, and many of them they never came back. There is a big cemetery in Etuno, just close to Anzio, where a lot of young men from America, and also Canada, and also Australia, but mostly it was American people. And, uh, and I always grew up you know, with the really admiration and uh, respect for people that gave their life and their limbs also sometimes, they even they like it. I prefer to die than just come back with, but that's another story. So I wrote this song for an America that unfortunately I see today that is going away. And some of the lyrics, I would like to use them for, to inspire, to get it back the way it used to be, the way it's supposed to be. Because now, supposedly, we go around the world spreading freedom. So far, we lost our freedoms home. And I would like to get them all back. And that's the song. It's called Thank You, America. And I dedicate it to you today, my dear friend, Representative Sonny Borelli. Hopefully, you like it. Okay. United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, America. If today I don't have to speak German and live under the Third Reich, hey, thank you. Live under that red flag Hey, thank you America Thank you for everything Thank you for all my dreams Thank you, yes I'm free Thank you America Thank you for everything all my dreams Thank you, yes I'm free Thank you America And if my wife doesn't have to hide her face And she can live like a woman Thank you Thank you America And if today I could drink Choose my own God. If today I can say what I think without looking behind my back. If today I can be the owner of my present and dream about my future. If today I'm a free man in a free country, I want to say one more time thank you, America. Thank you for everything 
and that was Thank You America, musical lyrics by myself, Gianluca Zanna. And as you heard, I mean, as you listen to the lyrics, that's the America that idealize, the America that we're losing every day. And hopefully with the help of our state legislators and local legislators, hopefully federal legislators, we can take back. But more important, we need your help to be involved. Because these legislators, they need to be seeing that they are not alone out there. I mean, people must be educated, must know our rights, because if we do not know our rights, we have no rights. Right? Yeah, exactly. So. Exactly. Um, we have a lot of things we touched so Which far. Which means the local folks need to start taking control of their school boards. Good point. Let's because, talk about that. Yeah. Yes. Tell me okay. about the core, Common Core. Common Core is uh, it's a, it's a, it, it's coming in. It's, come, it's, a, it's a wolf in sheep's clothing. Okay, and and uh, you know it's saying oh, but it's coming by the League of Governors and blah 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 blah. Okay, it's not. It's it's a, it's a curriculum that's being shoved down everybody's throats. The teachers do not like it. Uh, when you speak to I, and I go, I'm out and about a lot. I don't, uh, I, uh, and I I go to I go to wherever everybody else is at, and and I talk to the folks, and because you know you need to go. When I was in the Marines, when I wanted to find out what was wrong with a platoon or a company. I didn't go and talk to the sergeants or the, the lieutenants. I went and spoke with them young young Marines and uh, find out what's going on. And that's where you really find the truth, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so on the, when you go on the record with a, with a school teacher, they're like, oh, yeah, Common Core, yay. It's because they don't want to get fired, you know. But when you get them offline and you get them off the record, they're like, this is a disaster. I'm like, so, okay, thank you. And, of course, I've read the social studies book. And there's a reason why they call it social studies, you know, not history, because they want to... Uh, uh, dilute the mm -hmm. real real reason and if you call it history then that means you got to stick to history if you call it yeah. social studies you can revise history and you can twist it and and spin it any way you want so um somewhere that that truth gets buried so and, and it, once again the progressive agenda is to distract distort and then and if you stand up against it then they're going to defame you and and uh <laughs> so now just to spell it out for the people that probably they never heard about common core exactly now what's going to happen to the students of the of arizona well here's the thing is and of course people say the state legislature should stop common core curriculum coming we don't have that authority under the arizona mm -hmm. constitution the state board of education or state board of public instruction they set standards curriculum the actual what you're going to read is mm -hmm. protected in the arizona constitution at the local level it's it's that protection is in there for example uh, the state legislature coming in and putting else another program, another curriculum to indoctrinate another way or left or right or extreme mm -hmm. this way, or extreme that way. That's why it's protected at the local level. So that way the local values of that community can dictate their own values and what is to be taught in the public public schools. Okay, good. I didn't know that. Excellent. Very so good. if somebody doesn't like it, they need to go to the school board, and they need to get rid of certain people on that school board, and need to put some solid people in there. That's going to they want, especially when it comes to the history, and because uh, you know what, we have some bad. We have we've got every every country's got black eyes in history, mm -hmm. but we have to learn what those black eyes are, and we need to learn from them, and so that way they're not repeated. Exactly. So here we are, we're, we're repeating things again because we forgot how uh, back in the the twenties and thirties how progressivism started to get. It started to get its foothold until Mussolini and, and Hitler and, and communism started, you know, took over in, uh, in Russia. And then, of course, they backed off socialism that, and they know, changed it progressivism. Thank so. you. You know, the point is, uh, does it matter if it's socialism or fascism? It pretty much is the same concept where the individual is completely destroyed and there is the collectivist. I mean, the definition of fascism under Mussolini was the union between uh, the corporation and the government. Right. Okay, it was corporatism, and pretty much what we have now. I mean, yeah, you yeah know, look at General Motors. I mean, think about General Motors. Think about the healthcare situation. Yeah, you know, exactly. You know? Exactly. So that's where we are. You know, and yeah. people. You know, what? Well, sometimes I feel so sorry. Well, the useful idiots, as they call them, that they think that they are going to get some uh, benefit from this socialism. But this is not socialism. Socialism is bad enough. Don't get me wrong. It's terrible. But this is even two levels worse because they don't even get. Uh, to redistribute really like they think in their mind they can steal from Paul to give to Peter or things like that they're going to just steal from all of us and give to the corporations well the, the first the first big red flag that she, people should be asking is if they're spending millions of dollars promoting a program mm -hmm. that's supposed to be so great why would you have to spend millions of dollars promoting it yeah. if it's so great 
everybody's going to flock to it. So, exactly. Uh, you know, I, I find that kind of ironic. They spend more money advertising things that's going to shove down our throats. And by the way, if you don't sign up, we're going to find you. Exactly. Uh, that's called a shakedown anywhere else. So I, I wanted to remind to the listener that uh, we are talking here with the state representative, Sonny Borelli. And uh, not only I think he has a lot of good things he's done and you can, you know, you heard about him. One thing, honestly, I'm really proud about what he stood for. He stood against the expansion of Medicaid as also as part of the Obamacare. And uh, he didn't. They didn't betray us like some other Republicans did. And I'm not going to go now today with the first name. Let me just go with the last names. Uh, Goodale. Uh, he, he stood. He's st strong. There were a lot of power. I know I wasn't there, but I read enough. There a lot of pressure you had, guys. And I was really proud of you because even yeah. if we don't agree on some of the issue, I think you really used to well, strong there, on there the... there was a lot of arm twisting and, yes. and that. And, of course, they uh, spent a lot of money trying to market that yeah. and to put pressure on us. And uh, but, you know, ultimately, you know, I want to help people and I want to help people that, that need help. Yeah. But uh, that would have this that program is going to ultimately bankrupt. Bankrupt. Another thing, speaking about taxpayer, you've been awarded ear of the taxpayer with 93 percent rating by American for Prosperity. This is something solid because it's not just to give this to everybody. Uh, our governor, supposed to be conservative governor Brewer, she got only 8%. So that means for me that is real, okay? So I'm very glad about that. Last topic for the day, because time is running short. Um, there is, a, in the history of this country, uh, at least more than 105 or so documents where government is being experimented on us. Mm -hmm. They classify it. Right. I mean, look at... Uh, the New York uh, subway, and probably you know even more than I know because you've been in the military, uh, and you know stuff that we don't know probably. Yeah, I had to, do, I had to get anthrax shots and that were not even approved by the FDA. Yeah. Excellent. So you've been the first <laughs> guinea pigs, you know, to, to uh, and yeah. this is serious. I mean, look at the people also coming back from uh, the first Iraq war. I mean, yeah. you know the story. Now, this is something that now has become official. It's um, also a different organization, uh, the United Nations, they declare about this one. They're trying to uh, use it now with the excuse that they're trying to fight global warming. That, that we know is a fraud anyway. It's, right. it's, it's just, we are honestly, look around, it's cooling, yeah. okay? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's another way to tax uh, the way you breathe. That's another way to control you. Right. The key word I want to use with you is called geoengineering, okay? I gave you before an interesting DVD as my personal, uh, you know, gift uh, that I hope you can watch, enjoy, and maybe share with other rep representatives down there. It's a What in the World is Spring. And pretty much is about this uh, process that they're alterating or they're trying to manipulate the weather. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something that, uh, just to let you know, it's called cloud seeding also, and it's officially been going on in Mojave County for years. And there is also the participation of the Army Department of Engineers and the Federal State Department of Energy. And this is something, the study started since 1950. Are you aware of that keyword called geoengineering? Yes, I've heard of it. Okay. Yeah, heard so, of it. So, you know, today, did you look at the sky when you were driving around uh, here? Did you have a chance to look yes, at it? Yes, yeah, of course. I mean, we know, I'm not a science, I'm not a doctor, I'm not an expert, but I have a um, couple eyes, and I can see when there is a regular air traffic with airplanes, we have uh, pretty much almost the same condition here. We live in a high desert. And some days you cannot even see any more the sky because there are all these crisscross cross each other. Well, it depends airplanes. on how much moisture is in the air. I have just one question. Since time is short, can you do me a Christmas gift? Are you going to watch the DVD for me? Yes. I love you. Okay. <laughs> Lisa, that's all I want to ask you. I know, you know, in, you are a man of honor. I know that. You're 22 years in, in your service. I know you care about this country. I know you got kids and uh, you're going to have hopefully even grandkids. And all you want, the, what is best for the American people. So all I say, we try to help each other in this show to learn about each other. This geoengineering process, it is more than just vapor in the air. Unfortunately, we've been lying many times. Remember, you know, the downwinders, yeah. you know, the downwinders, you know, right. people. Right. I mean, they used to laugh at them. Well, blind, uh, you know, I'm not blind obedience. So, yeah. so, I, mean, so all I say you know, to question authority and, and question with boldness. For you know, the and truth. there is a point, you know, you have, of course, you are our state legislator. You're not in the federal government. So there is things you can do and things you cannot do. But as I said to my other friends, first of all, I don't care which type of government you are. The first thing we need to stand for good. Right. Our silence is consent, you know, and that's all I pray for you because you're sure. a good man. I think you can learn a lot and you already can teach us a lot, too. OK. 
final message for your constituents. Okay. Whatever you want to say. Okay. Well, like I said, I'm your representative, so I want to know how you feel on these things. So I want to know if it's okay. So if you don't think this is okay, so if your answer is no to every one of these questions, uh, I'm going to need your support. Um, do you think it's okay for the federal government to mandate our health care? If the answer is no. No. Okay. Do you... Uh, is it okay to allow drug smugglers and human traffickers to have an open border? No. Is it okay to for the uh, is it o okay to, for the government to mandate our, our education system? No. Is it okay for the federal government to own eighty five percent of Arizona state lands? No, no. Is it okay for bureaucratic organizations and agencies to sidestep our laws and usurp our constitution? No. If you voted no or said no for all those things, then I need your continued support because I am running for re-election. Oh, my gosh. I say, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Let me shake my hand, my friend. Thank, Thank you. you. Perfect. If somebody wants to reach, how can they reach you? Oh, well, uh, send my, you can send me an email through uh, to the state legislature and uh, or uh, give my office a call. And just to let you and, know. I'm... And sometimes I'm on Facebook, so okay. I you know, and I check my emails there and you know, every now and then and. And uh, so, you know, I, I have a special busy. page I'm creating for you on my website. It's called lovegunsfreedom.com. There you go. And people can have the chance to download the interview that we had today. And they will also find your website and know how to reach you. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Please go to lovegunsfreedom.com. This was Luca Zanna with our state representative, Sonny Borelli. See God you bless. next time. God bless.